Today we'll be diving into one of the most essential parts of React, hooks. If you're just getting started with React or have been using it for a while, understanding hooks is absolutely crucial for writing clean and efficient React components. So let's break it down starting with the question. What exactly are hooks? This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. In simple terms, hooks are special functions in React that let you hook into React's core features like state and lifecycle methods, without having to write classes of course. They were introduced in React 16.8 and they just make life so much easier. And now comes another question. Why use hooks at all? Well, the answer is quite simple. To avoid something like this. Before hooks were introduced, this was very common in React. This is called component drilling, where there were classes and you had to constantly give the props down and it would result in something of an atrocity like this. So if you want to have clean code to avoid this, just better learn hooks. And for that we'll be going over the three most important hooks in React. These will be the use state, the use effect and the use context hook. So let's have a look at our first example, use state. So here we are at our first example. This is a counter component. This counter component does nothing but has a count variable. And then as I click the button, I should be displaying the count. Nothing too complicated, right? It should probably work. So let's test it out. As I click in the console, you can see one is printed and then two, three, but the UI is not updating. That's a common problem. And this is what the use state hook is for. So let's start implementing use state. I'll clear the count from here and talk about what use state actually is. Use state adds reactivity to your component. That means you can pass in a value to use state and if that value changes, your component will get re-rendered and the UI will update. To demonstrate this, I will say use state and then the IDE will help me out. And if I press enter now, use state is imported at the top. I then put parentheses here and then here I can pass in the initial value that I'd like. I will say zero for now, but that's not enough to use use state. I have to store it in a variable. We usually store it in a constant variable and use state returns an array. Inside this array, you can destructure this with JavaScript. There is the value of your actual use state and there is a setter function. For example, count and set count. Count will get you the value and set count will enable you to set the value of the count. This syntax just won't work. This won't work with use state. This may work with a simple variable, but not with use state. So the implementation of this component would look something like this. We create our use state with the initial value of zero. We refer to the count, just like a normal variable in the you click the count times. And then in the button, we give an on click event and we set the count and the set count receives an argument as the value. So I set the count to be count plus one. Now if I test this out, this should be working. I just refresh here and then click it. You clicked one time, two times, three, four, five. It's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. So that's it for the use state hook. The key takeaway from this is that you can think of use state as a way to tell React that, hey, I have this value that might change over time. And when it does, I want you to re-render my component. Now the next hook will be the use effect hook. For that, we'll be building this simple demo. This fetches from an API and I can click this button to refresh the photos. Obviously, it's too fast, so I go to the network tab and select slow 4G, for example. And if I click the refresh now, you can see the, there is a little text that appears and then it loads in. So there are a lot of things going on around here. So let me just clean this up. We have some use state functions given here. We are defining photos, is loading and refresh key. These are all needed for the rendering. For example, the photos will render our images. The loading state will render 
our loading text and then there will be a dependency for when you click the button this value changes and so the component re-renders. There are some elements in our return statement as well but we'll be going through these at the end. I added some helper functions here const handle refresh will call set refresh this will trigger the refresh when needed and then there is the if loading then we don't return all this html instead we return a ptext saying loading photos and now comes the use effect hook as you can see at the top it's already imported for me use effect i just call use effect here parentheses the use effect hook is used for handling life cycles back in the old react there were multiple life cycle functions that were used but now we only have to use this one essentially what it does is you pass in a function and this function will execute at the load of the component and whenever the component re-renders at least at its current implementation because the second argument to this is a dependency array if i pass in an empty dependency array this will only run once the component loads values can be passed into this dependency array to tell React that whenever those values change, we should execute use effect once again. First of all, here when we load our component, I'd like to set loading to be true. If I was to emit this dependency array and just delete it, we would get an infinite loop because we would be constantly re-rendering and running use effect. Because use effects runs when the component loads and when it re-renders if we don't put this dependency array in here. So you always want to have it here. And after we set is loading to true, we have to do some fetching. This may look a little ugly, but we'll break it down. We are fetching data from a free API called JSON placeholder. We are calling the basic JavaScript fetch function, passing in the API, then grabbing the responses in JSON form, and then we are setting the data. We set the photos to be the data, which will also re-render our component. And then we also set loading to be false. If we have a look at this in action, if I refresh, we are also throttling the data. So it will load in, use effect will run, and I can click refresh, but it won't do anything because it changes the state, but there is no dependency for the use effect to fetch again. So for us to trigger the use effect once again, I have to pass in here something, and that something will be the refresh key because remember we have this handle refresh we are setting the refresh key so we are changing its value which means refresh key will change and if it does change then use effects will get called again and in our html we just have a div these are inline styled because that's not the focus of the video there is a button as you saw and we are mapping the photos over here so if I click the refresh button now, use effect runs again and we are fetching once again. So the key takeaway from this is that use effect is used for handling life cycles and you pass in here a function that will execute whenever use effect runs and use effect runs when the component loads or when a value here in the, in the dependency array changes. And you should always pass in a dependency array here even if it's empty just so you don't trigger infinite loops. And now we come to the implementation of our last hook, which is use context. Use context is used to be able to access a property from all components, no matter how nested in they are. Because as I showed you in the slides, with the prop drilling, which was the old way of passing down props from the top all the way to the bottom, you can build such a hell and atrocity as we saw. To avoid that they created use context and we'll be having a look at that. So the usage of use context is quite simple. First of all we'll be working in our app. Creating a context means we are providing some value to other components. There is something called react.createContext and inside that you pass in a base value and then we store it in a team context. This will be the value our components will be able to access later on. And to actually make them access this value, we have to use team context dot provider. 
and then we can override the value here to be dark for example or even green if i wanted to and inside that we render our component it's important that we also export this theme context and that it's outside of the app now let's have a look at what's going on in the themed component because there is no use context present here right so in our themed component First of all, we are importing use context at the top and we are also importing team context from our app or from whichever component you'd like to import it from. And then we are creating a new constant variable. This will be the way we access it in our component. And then we say use context and pass in the team context. Now the value that we've passed in from our app.gsx, which is green, or if I emit this, it would be light we can access it in our code which will be current team and then refer to our team let's check this out as i said i passed in green here and there is green presented so the key takeaway from this is that we can create a context give it a base value and then export it so that other components are accessing it and then we wrap the components that we want to have access to it with a provider of that context that we've created we can also set a value here to override the default value and then we can get the context value using the use context hook this is important because this way you can avoid prop drilling which we've already explored so with this we are done with hooks i've presented you the three main hooks there are seven more which you can look at and there is also a way to write your custom hooks but we will make videos on that later for now these are the three hooks that you use 99 percent of the time so i hope you enjoyed it and found value in it if you did please consider giving us a like maybe even subscribe and other than that i hope to see you in the next one happy coding and god bless